do not worry too much about fuel. The game asks that you roll your bike down a hill to save on fuel. And many online articles will tell you to save fuel. But it's just not necessary. Fuel is very abundant, often free, and is very easy to get. There are petrol stations everywhere that dispense free fuel. Your camp will fill your tank for just a few credits. Your initial home base has a free refueling station. Oh, I need this. That's it. Almost every neuroscience checkpoint has fuel canisters that respawn, as do many of the items at Nero locations. Almost every ambusher camp you conquer has a can or two lying around. There are many tow trucks strewn around the map that hold canisters of gas on them, and they too will respawn the next time you visit. I get the strong feeling that the game was going to have more survival elements, especially since the deer hunting mechanic seems like it was cut halfway down through development. The advice the game gives about saving fuel is more likely a remnant of earlier ideas, where the game was supposed to have very harsh survival elements, where very few resources were available, meaning you would have to scrape by with what you had. Even the collection of Freaker Ears for rewards seems like a function that was tagged on after the developers were told to make the game a little easier. <laughs> Suffice it to say that just like with ammunition, fuel is actually very easy to come by, and I would not suggest conserving fuel. Pick up a bat and use it before upgrading. Want to save on materials and extend the life of your weapon? Then use your bat a little while. Allow it to wear itself out a little, and then upgrade it. You can double the life of your melee weapon by first picking up the baseball bat, using it until it almost disintegrates, and then upgrading it, which restores its life. Residue bolts do not work on hordes. There are predetermined hordes that run around the map in very specific locations. You may be tempted to fire a residue bolt into the mix to start some sort of infighting, but the residue bolts do not work on hordes of freakers. Even if those freakers are hanging around the edge of the horde, if they are designated as part of the horde, then the residue bolt has no effect on them. The residue bolts are best used when burning down nests because that is where they work the best. You can sabotage enemy bikes to get scrap. Knock riders off their bikes without damaging their bikes too much, and you can sabotage their bikes for scrap. So long as the bike is not an ally's bike and is not too damaged, then you can pull scrap from it. Take a screenshot of the map when you get IPCA tech. After the credits roll, you are given the chance to earn a stun gun. However, you need to collect 18 pieces of IPCA technology. When I had finished the game, I only had 16, so I had to go online, find the locations of each, and then visit each location to see where I had missed the IPCA tech pickup. Avoid this problem by taking a screenshot of the map wherever you pick up IPCA technology. That way, at the end of the game, you know where not to visit in order to find your final pieces of IPCA tech. Let them run into your field of aim. A large part of the tension in this game is born from the game trying to make you panic. It doesn't try to scare you, but it does use every trick in the book to make you panic because you shoot and flail wildly when you panic. Learn to relax, and learn to take a very measured approach to your shooting. Do not be afraid to shoot freakers up close, especially since that is when they are at their most vulnerable. We have all seen them do that head twitch thing, where they dodge your bullets. Well, you can avoid this by aiming, and then letting the freakers run into your field of aim before you pull the trigger. Do not follow them around the field, because they will continue to dodge. 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 Just keep your aiming reticle pointed in their direction, and wait for them to move into position before you shoot them. 
death flails are a big problem. The game is built to make you panic, and death flails are a big part of that. The freakers will flail around and even keep running for you and clawing at you when they are already dead. They cannot hurt you after they have died, even if they are still clawing at you. However, you do not often know this and may keep shooting and swinging. One of the things you can do is to count how many shots or hits it takes with your current weapon to kill a freaker. That way, you do not waste shots or swings on already dead zombies. Turn on the XP indicators. Go into the main menu and then to options, and then to gameplay. At the bottom, you will see a function that says XP indicators. This turns on the function where you can see your XP flying off your enemies when you kill them. It may dissolve a bit of the immersion for some, but it gives a clear indication of when an enemy is dead. Also, it lets you know when you've hit a headshot, which is great if you have the head rush skill that recovers a little of your health when you shoot an enemy in the head. The trophy section actually has a use. It teaches you to play the game more freely, teaching you things like rewarding you for damaging your bike so that you do not drive around scared to bash into things. Deer Crossing. It teaches you to attack enemies with crafted weapons and it forces you to experiment with every type of crossbow bolt so that you learn their unique advantages in the game. Your aim will improve as you crouch. When you see a gun's stats and it says accuracy, it is actually giving you an idea of where your bullet will land when you fire your gun. For example, the shotgun has a very wide spread, which is why the aiming reticle is very large. Other weapons have a smaller reticle because their accuracy statistics are far higher. Other weapons have a smaller reticle. You can improve it and make it smaller with the correct skills. And by standing still. You can also crouch to improve the spread and make your aim shots more accurate. Items respawn at certain places. Your initial base on the mountain has items strewn everywhere that keeps respawning every day. The new row checkpoints have respawning items, which usually includes a bit of scrap and almost always includes a health pack inside the laboratory trailer. Plus, your initial base and Nero labs all have free fuel, so you can fast travel to them without additional cost. You can have a bit of a restock and then move on to fast travel to the next one. Hit deers and wolves with your bike. Just like hitting freakers and enemies, you can hit wildlife with your bike too. It is often easier and quicker than getting off your bike and shooting, and or trying to shoot wildlife while you are on your bike. Sadly, hitting a bear won't kill it, though I have never hit one at full speed with a nitrous on. However, even a bash at a regular speed will damage your bike within 3% of a total write-off. Um, nom, 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 nom. How to counter-attack my first question was, how do I counterattack? How do I use the escape artist skill in Days Gone? If you have the escape artist skill, then you bash the correct button shown on the screen until you break from the grapple. Then, a button will appear on the screen and a small line will spin around it. You have to stop the spinning line in the section that is highlighted. If you do, then the counterattack will happen and the enemy will die. Do not panic when it is spinning, because you cannot be attacked while you are in a grapple. Dodge Roll the Breaker Though the breakers look intimidating, they are actually one of the easier, higher level enemies to kill. Their only move is to run at you and bash. 
As the breaker nears you, just dodge away at the last moment. You then have a few seconds to shoot him at close range before he runs again. All you need then do is rinse and repeat. Dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot. Another bounty. The auto shotgun is a great mid-game gun for freakers. The auto shotgun is awesome for taking down freakers. It works the best when they are close and it has a very wide spread so that when they are up close it is hard to miss them. It has a massive ammo capacity, especially if you have the up the empty skill. Plus, it shoots as quickly as you can pull the trigger and you can shoot lots of shots before needing to reload. As you can see from this video, I can shoot very quickly with the auto shotgun, and that is true both in and out of focus mode. With that said, do not make the same mistake I did here by shooting too far away. As you can see, even at this middle distance, the gun has very little effect. It only becomes super effective when enemies are very close. The closer they get, the more effective the gun becomes. There are other automatic shotguns, but this is by far my favourite for the middle of the game, mostly due to its massive ammo capacity and its ability to shoot really, really fast. I did move on to more powerful guns in the later game, including the Liberator shotgun, but it's the auto shotgun that got me through the bulk of the middle game. You will probably be done with the gun by the time you reach the Crater Lake map and things start getting a little more dangerous. If you want the auto shotgun, then you need to complete at least 25% of the Horde Killer storyline. In short, there are 40 Hordes spanning all the maps in the game. Three of the Hordes you are forced to play through a storyline, leaving 37 optional Hordes. Kill 10 Hordes and you get the automatic shotgun. If you are struggling to find enough Hordes, then go online and look at the websites of people who have diligently screenshot the Horde locations. Shoot enemies in the head. Not only do you get 1.5 times more XP if you shoot a Freaker in the head, but there is also a skill called Head Rush, where you get some of your life back if you shoot an enemy in the head. Hunting Freakers at Night I have read several articles saying that hunting Freakers at night gives you more XP because they are stronger. I am having a hard time proving this because Freakers seem to give off the same amount of XP night or day. However, during the day, there are mostly swarmers outdoors, which give you 20 XP per regular kill, whereas at night, there are far more bleachers, which give you 50 XP per regular kill. Perhaps the confusion between swarmers and bleachers is where this misunderstanding arose. Stealth killing gives you more XP. Take the Screamer, shoot her and get 150 XP. Stealth kill her and you get 262 XP. Don't be afraid to shoot rather than being stealthy. Killing using stealth is good because it means you get freaker ears without having to spend money on bullets or fixing up your melee weapon. Yet, if you are playing on normal, then feel free to blast away with bullets rather than stealthing. Firstly, it is faster and secondly, you can always buy bullets again using credits you earn in camps. And by the middle of the game, you will be swimming in credits in a variety of different camps. Plus, the money you get for hunting wildlife is far more than you get for handing in freaker ears. Suffice it to say, you may as well shoot the freakers because bullets are not nearly as scarce or as expensive as the game would have you believe. Upgrade your bike and drive over freakers. You can upgrade your bike to become more deadly so that any freakers you hit will die outright. You can hit Freakers on a bike that you haven't upgraded, but you will have to hit them at high speed to make them die. However, after you upgrade your bike a little, you can hit the Freakers with less force and still kill them. Also, as you upgrade your bike, it becomes faster, which means you do not need as big of a run-up before hitting the Freaker killing speed. You do not have to crouch to stealth. All you have to do is catch an enemy on a low alert level. This means you can literally sprint up behind an enemy and initiate a stealth takedown. The only way this doesn't work is if the enemy becomes aware of you before you press the stealth takedown button. 
shooting people off bikes. When you encounter regular bikers, your best bet is to shoot them off the bike. Do not worry about being too accurate. Even a bike at 9% will still give you 3 scrap when you sabotage it. So do not worry yourself too much about keeping the enemy bike safe. It is only when the enemy bike is totaled that you cannot get scrap from it. Bash people off their bikes during missions. An upgraded bike is also more durable and more deadly so that you can easily damage other people on their bikes. There are several occasions where you will have to chase somebody down as part of a mission. Instead of shooting, just bash them using your nitro to help you get the speed. During missions it is far more efficient and quicker than trying to shoot them off whilst riding your bike. Do this mostly for missions when you are tired of being shot and you wish to fulfill the objective as swiftly as possible. There are no best skills. I keep reading articles about how certain skill types are the best and it's just not true. With the exception of the focus shot, which should have been a base game feature and not a skill, all of the skills have their own merits and all allow for different playstyles. There are obviously some skills that are built to help people take down hordes, especially the last tier shooting perks, and there are obviously some skills that are built to help you out in the field. However, each set of skills has its own merit because each of them applies to certain play styles. The skills that get you excited may not excite your friends in the same way. This is probably because they are playing a very different way to you. You can refill ammo at gun lockers. Go into the locker and select a gun that you have already purchased. Choose your gun and it gives you the option to fill it with ammo. The cost of refilling your ammo is taken from a friendly camp. Throw a bomb and roll. There are many ways to take down hordes using the weapons at your disposal. That is part of the fun of the game. At times, when I was panicking, or out of bullets, I would use the throw a bomb and roll method. In fact, when timed correctly, throwing explosives became a good way to put a few moments of distance between me and the horde. Feel your gamepad rumble when you are tracking. This is a very well made game. This game has very few annoyances, but one of the things I found personally taxing were the tracking missions. One thing that helped was that when the survival vision was active, I could slowly turn around and feel the gamepad rumble. Your pad will rumble whenever you are facing the direction of the next clue. In most cases, this helped me find the clue, especially when it was something small that was very difficult to spot. The best melee weapons are found. Despite the game allowing you to make your own melee weapons, the most powerful I ever possessed were ones I found. Specifically, I found them whilst travelling on Crater Lake and on Highway 97. They are not overly common, but on the other hand, are not very difficult to find. In fact, I almost guarantee you will come across them in your travels around Crater Lake and Highway 97. Once you find them, do not drop them because they may be tricky to find again. When you finally come across them, keep them and repair them before they break. Using the field repair skill, you can use scrap to repair your weapon on the weapon wheel. Get through doors faster. You can burst through most doors. Running or sprinting, you can burst through doors. You do not have to hold a button in order to get through, unless you are trying to get through a Nero Science trailer door. Every horde member must be killed. You need to kill every member of a horde. If even one of them manages to escape, then you have to track it down or your achievement will not be logged. This can be very frustrating if one of the horde glitches out and gets stuck behind a wall. It can also be very annoying if one of them wanders off and you have to go on a free hunt. Can't complete mission 
glitches. There are going to be times when you cannot complete a mission. This sometimes happens when you are carrying something that has otherwise disappeared. When you load, the game does a sort of soft reset. This means that the horde that was hunting you may have disappeared, or the box that you have lost has otherwise respawned. There may even be times when you are on bounty hunting missions, and you arrive to find the target is not there. So, you reload your game, travel back to the area, and the enemy is suddenly there. This is because, by reloading, you softly reset the game, which eliminated the earlier glitch. Stealth Kill the Screamer The Screamer enemy is harmless and will not attack you. Her only defence is to call other Freakers, to drain your stamina, and to then run away very quickly. Stealth Kill her for 262 XP. It is the best way to dispatch her because you only get 150 XP for a straight kill and 150 XP for a headshot. Stealth Kill the Breaker No matter how you kill the Breaker, you are only going to get 200 XP, and that is even if you kill him with a headshot. However, if you manage to see him before he sees you, then Stealth Kill him, and you will get 350 XP. You will need the Executioner skill in order to take down higher tier enemies. Stealth Kill Reachers just like the other higher tier enemies in this game, the Reachers do not offer extra XP for shooting them, even if you shoot them in the head. All you get is 200 XP per kill, unless you stealth kill them, for which you will receive 350 XP. Don't try to stealth kill runners. Just like with the Screamer and the Breaker, you will get no extra benefit from shooting the runner's head. The most XP you can get from a runner is 150 XP. There is no way to successfully stealth kill a runner on a consistent basis. Your best bet is to crouch with a shotgun and blast them for an instant kill. And it makes it pretty difficult to miss once they are up close. Don't try to stealth kill Rager Bears. You can run in circles around the fluffy bugger and he just can't get you. Just run around in circles until it runs out of steam and then turn around and blast it. When killing a Rager Bear, do not reload, simply use one gun, and when it is out of ammunition, switch to another gun. The Rager Bear relies on you pausing and standing still in order to strike, which you can avoid more easily by switching weapons rather than reloading. You can do the same thing when you are in a sticky situation with a horde. Don't reload, just switch weapons and then reload later when you have made some space between you and your enemy. How to get into the Kemalt Community College Neuro Checkpoint As you go searching for Neuro Checkpoints, you will come across the Kemalt College, and no matter what you do, you will not be able to get inside. This is only temporary. As you go through the main missions, the area will open up. Later in the game, there is a mission called I'm Never Given Up slash So Many of Them, during which you will be given access to the Kemalt Community College Nero Checkpoint. Refuel and restock at camps. Do not worry about running out of camp credit. You may run out of camp credit after you have just paid for a few upgrades. But, in most cases, you are going to be flooded with camp credit. Even by accident, you are going to collect Freaker Ears, and you are probably going to pick up plants and dead animals too, all of which can be traded for credit. Plus, many missions pay in credits too. In short, do not worry about running out of credit in camps. With that in mind, every time you visit a camp, you should resupply your bullets, health items, throwables, and you should repair your bike and fuel it up.
These functions alone are going to save you a lot of fussing and messing around while playing the game. There are genuinely no reasons to be frugal when playing this game. Throw molotovs and roll. Sometimes you are forced to make a snap decision and throw a molotov near you. This often results in you being set on fire. However, you can sometimes avoid this by throwing a molotov or napalm near yourself and then rolling away before you continue running. The roll immediately after the throw seems to cancel out the fire effect before it starts, meaning you do not get burnt. The Burnout Apocalypse Trophy They want you to drift for 5 seconds. For this, you will need the Nitrous 3 upgrade which is a late game upgrade. Also, in order to pull off the drift, you will need to downgrade to the first bag engine, the standard engine, and down to the first set of tyres. Finally, when you do your drift, do not pull the analogue stick all the way to the right or left. Instead, pull it diagonally to the left or the right in order to create a drifting circle. Finally, if you are still struggling, then try it out in the rain or in the snow. The goal is to keep the bike moving. This is a very frustrating trophy that took me a while to achieve, but that is how I did it. Things can sometimes get a little Far Cry 5. In Far Cry 3, 4, and especially in 5, you can make use of wildlife. They will run in and kill some of your enemies. Despite you being unable to control animals, like in Far Cry, there are times when enemies will fight enemies. Wild animals will attack human enemies. Freakers will attack breakers, and there are even times when hordes will run in and start attacking human enemies when you don't expect them. You can only carry 999 Freaker Ears. After defeating a horde, I learned that I can only carry 999 of one variety of Freaker Ear. I had already killed the horde, and there was no way to pick up the Freaker Ears. I went away and I sold the ears I already had. I then returned, and it turns out I could still pick up the ears. The bodies had gone, but the dead body symbols were still visible on my minimap. Luckily, I was still able to pick up the ears from the bodies that had disappeared. So that you do not have to deal with the same problem, try to remember that you can only carry 999 of a single type of Freaker ear. Fire is a mixed blessing. Firstly, I love the Attractor Bomb. It has saved my hide a bunch of times in this game. But I also learned to love fire. It is a mixed blessing because you can easily light yourself on fire by accident. But all you have to do to put yourself out is to roll. You can run through fire and it will set you alight, but it doesn't stop you attacking, which means you can sacrifice a little of your life, cause some damage to the enemies while you are still on fire, and then roll to put yourself out before carrying on. The bits you missed. There was a bunch of stuff I had not uncovered near the Ripper area. Turns out that progress on some stories and even some hordes are blocked off if there is still fogged out areas on your map. This even includes when you complete the game and go into the end game section. Turns out I had missed an ambush camp, and another one here. It was the reason I couldn't get the last neuro intels and my last neuro injector. The end game and missing hordes. When I had finished the game, some of the hordes that I missed popped up on the map, showing me exactly where they were. I killed them, but then I saw that the horde's mission was not complete. The game informed me there were still hordes that needed killing on Highway 97. However, the map didn't identify where the hordes were. I continued playing, and then I died. After a while, or perhaps after I died, the hordes seemed to appear on the map. It may have been because my character died, or because I was progressing through the endgame missions, or perhaps even because I was opening up areas I had missed during the game. 
Nevertheless, at the end of the game, after a while, the map eventually showed me the final remaining hordes that I needed to complete the hordes mission. You're safe now. This is a mild spoiler, but there are a series of missions with a traumatized young girl. At the end of the game, you are going to see that her mission is only 90% complete. Keep completing endgame tasks, including taking out the hordes, and eventually the end of her mission will present itself. Days Gone is a brilliant game. It is well worth seeing it through all the way to the end, and playing through the missions in the endgame period. I know people say that this is just another zombie sandbox in an already oversaturated marketplace, but that is not the point. With this game, it's almost as if the developers took everything about sandbox games, examined it, and then purposefully removed all the annoying stuff that one usually finds in a sandbox game. I usually can't finish sandboxes. Usually, it's because there's too much to do, or the story gets lost, or I become overleveled and get bored. But I played all the way through Days Gone, including the endgame stuff, and I think it's brilliant. It is good to see that developers can learn from the mistakes of others. Even with regards to the story, every mission doesn't have to be a firework display, every character moment doesn't have to be exaggerated, and the protagonist is allowed to be kind of pissed off with what he or she has to put up with. I think the character moments alone are enough to sell this game. It may seem like the story has been done a hundred times before, but has it? This game is about real people struggling to cope, and at its core, the story is one of hope, or, at the very least, the human capacity to hold out hope when all else around them is falling apart. I know there are a lot of zombie sandbox games out there, but this is the first one I have ever played where they have got everything right. And that is something worth celebrating. So, thank you, SIE Bend Studio.